welcome back, Black Magic TV. And tonight we have a return of a former guest, friend, Mr. Nate Sell from Mirror Cell. Yes, sir. I'm killing it. Yeah, thanks for coming back, dude. I'm glad you hit me up. I uh, I did listen to the EP, All Assembled. Uh, I dig it. It's cool. Thanks. It's. I was trying to think if I was going to describe it to everyone, and it's like uh, if if you were in like a Blade movie, <laughs> but instead of techno. That same band was playing heavy metal. Fuck yeah. I guess is the only way I could describe it. Because yeah. it's weird. Because like some of the songs, weird in a good way. Don't take offense to that. Some of the songs are very, um, like they sound like they could be in like a vampire movie or something like yeah, that. Man. But then the next song, you're like, well, this is like a totally different vibe. But that, it's they, they have a yeah. conducive sound to them, but they're very different. Well, you nailed it on the head with the Blade reference. Uh, we actually had some memes that went semi-viral on Instagram a little bit with some with like Blade videos with oh, our nice. songs over it. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, I mean, cinema is a huge part of my influence in general. So the um, the the crossovers with like Matrix, Blade, all right. that cool stuff. I mean, even how I'm fucking dressed right now. Like, right. <laughs> Um, definitely. It's very like it's like cyberpunk metal. Yeah, yeah, a little right. bit. Um, and this, especially this EP too, with the aesthetic of like the artwork and everything, that right. is definitely um, on par. And now, sure. last we were kind of talking before. Last time you were here, it was you and a couple guys, and you were sort of doing this as just like a recording only thing. Yep. But now you've actually have a full band where you guys are playing live shows out yeah um our debut show is coming up in december um but yeah beforehand it was just we were kind of like marketing ourselves as a three-piece um but now we we got a full lineup we got five members in total um two guitarists one bassist drummer me and uh yeah we're gonna be we're gonna be playing here soon and are you where, where's the show at so our debut show is actually going to be in st louis it's kind of weird it's technically in illinois but it's right. like East on the st. river yep, so yep, yeah yep. people call it st louis it's at pops yeah and uh it's going to be with our friends who are like local legends there named dead seven um our friends from kentucky uh in a band called cohen noise uh, which I think they're going to be on the road with another band called Careful Gays, so they're also going to be on that show too, and uh, another St. Louis local named White Rose. Sick. Now, is there are some of the guys from St. Louis that are in the band, or is that yeah. just okay? Yeah, our guitarist is from St. Louis, or one of our guitarists, and then the rest of us are all KC. Um, so yeah, we're kind of like split. It's perfect because we got like kind of two different demographics in the Midwest that we right. can play to, and also not too far away from each yeah, other. Yeah, just a few hours away. Yeah. So when now, how do you guys do? You get together to practice? Is it like uh, three of you practice and the other one kind of like <laughs> does it all? Like how does that work out? Um, yeah, so we we try to practice as a full band as much as possible, but obviously with uh, our other guitarist being from St. Louis, sometimes he can't always make it down. Um, so we regularly practice as a four piece with our other guitarist, and we backtrack a lot of our stuff, so right. it kind of can fill in for the missing right. member. Um, but for the most part, yeah, we, we just try to pack practice as a full band and we'll like schedule like rehearsal sessions basically. Right. And we'll just go in. That's cool. Um, and when is your first KC show going to be? So I don't know if you can technically count it as KC, but we're going to be playing December 17th, a couple days after our debut show in Lawrence at okay. the bottleneck. Well, that's, I mean, the same thing. Yeah, you know, exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. If you're from area. Kansas city, you know, that, right. like if you're playing Lawrence, you're technically still playing hometown. Um, but yeah, we're going to be playing at the bottleneck with crown magnetar, fucking crazy heavy band. Um, Extermination Dismemberment is also on that bill. Another band called Extortionist and Larsenia Row. Okay. So it's going to be a pretty st stacked out lineup. Nice. I saw, I mean, it seemed like you were getting some pretty good traction on Spotify when I looked today. Like you're getting like, like you're like, I mean, what is this? Like 9,000 monthly plays. That seems like pretty good for. Yeah. Um, like, um, 
a band that really wasn't a band that's never played a live show, I think yeah, that might exactly. be probably pretty good. Like, yeah, man. Uh, that's like the beauty with social media now is you don't really even need to be throwing yourself out there with playing a bunch of live shows like before you can kind of just blow up online before you even do all of that. Right. And I think that's like the, like, you know, SoundCloud rap was like a real big push yeah. on that. Right. Like where people realize like, Oh, I can make a band record music and we can release it. And then that will get us the beginning attention that will lead us into right. playing shows where before like it back in my day, it was always like you played shows and then you recorded yeah. while you were playing shows. That came second. And that came, yeah, yeah that, you had to play shows to get the money to do the recording. Yep. But now you can just do that shit. Like, I mean, we could record an album right here in my exactly. basement with the bare minimum equipment that yeah. I have. You know what I mean? That's fucking cool. Um, you also pulled up in a giant ass Sprinter <laughs> van, which I wasn't expecting. Yeah, did I scare you a little bit? Not a little. I just was like, I didn't know you had that. Do you That's, think that Amazon was pulling up? Yeah, I was like, what the fuck? I didn't did buy I order anything. something. I was like, I was at that <laughs> mug the Amazon guy here on a Thursday night. Uh, yeah, we're getting tour thing, ready. Is that? Oh yeah, so you're gonna go on tour? Uh, not. We don't have anything booked yet but right. we're we're preparing have you had that van for a while or did you just get yeah it? it's in the family okay uh my i i have someone close to our family that that owned that van previously so i uh i have been bestowed it nice um, so. is it like rigged out already for oh, like yeah. camping cool oh, yeah. that's and I, cool that, another thing too is we're i mean we'll get to it later but we're starting to record a new lp and i usually have to travel um, to do that. So it's like perfect for traveling. Cause I mean, we can sleep in it, we can make food in it, we can do everything. Yeah. Else. So Even you don't have to we'll go have get Airbnb's. a hotel room and everything when you're on the I road. mean, yeah, exactly. Yeah. There, so there's that too. So it's, it's perfect. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, my friend Coleman Williams, um, he's, uh, Hank Williams, the third son, but he came over, okay. but he has this old E250 short bus called Rochelle. It's from like this place called the Rochelle yeah. center or something. But Coleman, uh, he showed me his van. It's cool. They've got it all rigged up and yeah. they they get hotel rooms, but they can't sleep on it. So like when he came in, he, they played, he came over after the show and it was like one in the morning when we got here. So he's down here with me and then goes outside. The whole band's just like rigged up in bunks, sleeping. Hanging you know out, what I yeah. mean? So it's cool. Yeah. Uh, but I also am a car guy, so I like seeing that shit. I was about to mean? say, my uh, my dad used to have an, an old gray Volkswagen bus um, yeah. like through like majoritively like my younger years. And I, I loved that thing. It was so cool. And I just like loved like because it wasn't like really rigged up to live in but it was still like functional to like be around in and hang right. out in and it was so cool so having a van now is kind of like reminiscent of that and it's i, right. I missed it and now have you ever been like this car has ever been like a big thing to you um, or is it always just sort of like music it's always really been music and like other forms of art. I I wish I could have got more into cars. I have an in law that's really into cars and stuff. Yeah. And whenever he talks about cars, it, it it is fascinating to me. But unfortunately, I I don't think I ever really went down that rabbit hole. Yeah, and I mean, there's always time. Like always it's like time. a thing that comes with age. Also, like once you accomplish something, then you can go. Well, hey, I got a little extra dough. I can finally buy True. that. You know, whatever car Blade had, maybe I don't <laughs> know. Didn't he yeah. have like a charger or something like that? I think it was a charger. I don't remember what they had in those I movies. I, I just want the Camaro from Supernatural. The all black one. Is it a Camaro? Oh, no, it's an Impala. It's an Impala. The four-door Impala. Yeah. yeah. It's like a 66, I think. Or a 65. I believe it's a 65 Chevy Impala. What about the car from Evil Dead? The yellow one? Uh, The station wagon? Is it a station wagon? I don't wagon? know if it's a station wagon. I don't remember where Evil Dead 1. Or, well, I guess there's only one Evil it's Dead. Like, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking of... Uh, it's in all three. It's with the ash, at least. Yeah. And kind of... Actually, no. It's it's also in the uh, 2013 one as well. Yeah. It's For a, like a minute. Oh, is it a station wagon or is it's it... It's sitting there like when they like pull up. It's like a 70s car, I think. It's uh, Yeah. I don't know. I'll have to look that up later. Yeah, me too. As I'm sitting here with the internet. Yeah, we have the power in our fingertips. Yeah, power in our fingertips. <laughs> That's why I need like a guy. I need Anson over here to just yeah. be like, dude, look this Jamie, up. Jamie, pull that up. Yeah, Anson, look this up. But uh, 
Yeah, no, uh, the Supernatural car is cool. Somebody in town, I believe they're in town, they have one, because it's always at Comic-Con. They always have it up there so you can, like, pay to take your well, photo with it. Aren't they from, isn't the show, well, it's from, it's from Lawrence, Wichita. Like, Lawrence or Wichita. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah I think it's Lawrence, It's actually. Lawrence, and then they end up in Wichita at one point. They yeah. end up in Wichita when they, that show got weird. It's cool. Yeah. My mom was way into it. Yeah. I tried to watch it all, and then it's hard to watch. It's kind of kind of. I got cringy. through most of it, <laughs> and then once it gets to a certain point, like anything, it's just like okay, we're getting a little. Like when they started going to like heaven, yeah, and no, like that's where then I it got like too. it's like okay, I still I understand the good versus evil thing, but like we're getting a little crazy with yeah. it now. Like like we need to go back to like mythical. Like, yeah, when it was all on Earth, like yes, yeah. the devil is here, and like God was like Booger from uh, <laughs> wasn't God Booger from Revenge of the Nerds? Yeah, yeah, he yeah, was. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Oh shit! Yeah, it's been a while since I watched that. My, yeah, it's uh, a great, great show. It's such a like hospital show. Like that show's always on in a hospital somewhere. Oh yeah, it's one of the shows like Impractical Jokers. That where, like, too. There's some channel that's always playing that. Yeah, you know, yep. you know. There's a bunch of shows like that. That you could just always find. Like, the Happy Days used to be like that when I was a kid. Like, yeah. It seemed like Happy Days. Happy Days and Andy Griffith show were always on. Yep. God, <laughs> who's watching this crap? Like, or ridiculous. Sometimes I wonder, like, back in the day, it's like, now you can, like, there's so much shit, you know what I mean? And they're constantly new shit being made. But, like, back in the day, people, like, you know, they watched Andy Griffith when it came on in black and white, and then they could like rewatch it a bajillion times. You leave it to Beaver, like all these shows. You're like, how? Like, how do you, how did you do that? Yeah. You know what I mean? These are just always played like Friends. I think Friends is one of those shows that's probably always on that's, a network. That's somewhere. probably more rewatchable for me. Yeah, I least. don't know. Like, maybe. Yeah. I, um, I think like, like The Office, too. Yeah. I can't count how many times I've rewatched that whole series. Yeah, see, a lot of people are, and I just never was like, yeah, it's funny if I caught it, I'd get yeah. it, but I, I've never sat down and be like, I'm going to watch this whole entire series. Can't relate. And I didn't, <laughs> well, because there was like a time where like, I do watch things, like I watched all the Penguin, you know what I mean? Yeah. But there was like a time in my 20s where like, I didn't have money, I didn't have a television, like cell phones weren't like they are now to where you can just like, you know. I wasn't pulling up Netflix on my phone. True. You know what I Dude, mean? Like it's so overwhelming I so how I like, accessible everything is. Now. I lost a certain thing where it's like when I see people with like cable and satellite, like my parents still have like I think they have maybe have YouTube TV now or something, but Ball, forever yeah. they had a satellite dish. And I was always just like, Why? Why yeah. do you have this? Like it seems so like not unnecessary at this right. point. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're watching commercials. Like who I watches hate that. commercials? I hate that, dude. That's how that's how they get me with like new streaming services. Yeah, where it's like the premium pa- premium plan has no ads. Yeah. Fuck it, I'm getting that. I yeah. can't suffer through these goddamn Tubi ads. I got us um, tick or not TikTok. I got us uh, Peacock. Yep. But only because it was like five ninety nine for a year, but it has the ads. But the ads are like literally like. Two ads, they're like 20 seconds long, that's, that's and I just manageable. mute the volume whenever yeah. they come on, so I don't have to like be... I'm not trying to get psyop yeah. by Dawn Dish Soap <laughs> or something, you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, otherwise, yeah, I can't... I don't do it. Like We switch back and forth between Hulu and Netflix. Yeah. So like six months we have Hulu, six months we have Netflix, because then I feel like no matter which one you have, you run out of shit you want to watch, so you just switch it up. I've been getting back into DVDs, man. DVDs, 4Ks. Nice. Just, I, I want to own that shit. I want to yeah, have dude, it. Dude, there's like a big, um, there's a big. I'm not going to rent a movie. Right. There's That's a big, dumb. and I'm a big vinyl guy. Dude. Yeah. So like now it's, uh, there's a big movement for that. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't, I used to be. Like I fucking love movies, and I, I undoubtedly that's sort of what led me to this because yeah. I was like, like wanted to go to film school, didn't work out. Option B, the only other thing I want to do is build hot rods, so we did that. But um, I used to have this insane VHS collection when I was younger and DVD. I mean, thousands of movies, and I like just saw it. And then, well, that's saw that's all shit. I these are that's recent. That's all. Um, that's that's capitalism, baby. I'm okay. buying and selling now. <laughs> Uh, bastard 
But <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I'm the bastard. No, uh, I uh, that sort of thing. I've been doing that with Frank, where I would like I get records or stuff that I don't want, and I got my grandma's VHSs, and there I kept some, and there's like I have a small little collection in there. And then it got to a point where it's like, okay, if I keep doing this, it's going to get crazy. Like, I have a box out there with like 60 or 70, like, sealed VHS tapes. Oh, I might like, have to raid that. Yeah, there's uh, there's some... I put a bunch of really cool shit up at the record store already, and we didn't know how I was going to do it. And Frank, like, I went by four days later, and Frank's like, yeah, dude. I was like, there's a bunch of the books gone I put up there. There's a bunch of the movies gone. I'm like, what the fuck? He's like, I know, dude. I never would have thought these movies would yeah. be flying off the shelf like that. I'm like, shit. At our practice space, we have like a TV VCR combo, uh -huh. and every day that we practice, I always bring like a couple of VHSs and we'll just pop those in while yeah. we're playing, just have it on in the background. I took I took one of those up there to the record store yeah. and sit next to that rack on like the yeah. trash bin, and Frank's been using it to like watch old VHS. It's awesome, dude. It's yeah. so fun. I do I do that also at home, like in my little office. I right. have a little combo as well, and I'll just pop in a VHS and just let it play. Yeah. Long we uh, I found some Gigi Allen DVDs, oh. and they were these bootlegs. How much? Uh, the Franks got them oh. up at the record store because <laughs> I took them up there. But like he, he wants to sell them. Yes, our hit. But me then up Jim first. was like, "I want to watch those first. And Jim's like, "You're never." Gonna, Frank's like, "You're never gonna watch these, dog." And so if you hit up, go up there and tell Frank I sent you up there. He'll okay. fucking sell them to you. Okay, right but on. uh. They ended up being, it was like one of those weird times where I'm at the swap meet and it's like, yo, like two buck Chuck, you know what I mean? I'm over there wheeling and dealing with this guy and bought a whole bunch of shit. And he, I was like, walked to the end of the table and he's like, I was like, oh, what are these? He goes, oh, you, you want those movies? Just throw a couple extra bucks on your pile. I'm like, okay. Yeah. And he's like, I knew somebody would want those. And I was like, dude these might be something and I got them and Frank's yeah. like there isn't another copy for sale in America and they're like super rare bootlegs really you know? yeah they're like these weird DVDs dude and I'm oh, like oh dude and like, is, is it like the documentary or is it live no, show no no footage? no, no, no. They're, I don't know what it is I didn't yeah, watch I didn't it. Watch it I didn't watch it I just took oh, it up no. there to the record I was like well, it's I, Gigi, so I was like yeah so I, was like, <laughs> I will take these and these will get me the records that I have ordered fuck so. yeah dude and then right now I I went and bought a like CD collection from a guy Mm -hmm. that was all doo-wop yeah. and Motown. It was like a, a tote. It was like a big-ass box of doo-wop, a big-ass box of Motown, and then it was another box, like a, a tote, like a milk crate, full of like low-rider oldies comps and oh, like they're dude. in sets. And Frank, I was like, I'm going to go look at these. We looked up one of the sets. It was like on eBay for $800. And I was just like, holy shit. And then Frank finally started digging into them the other day. And he's like, he started showing me when I went up there. And it was like, this CD, boom, $80. Dude. None for sale in America. $80. This guy had bought like every, like all these Vault series. Yeah. Um, uh, goddamn uh, Motown records. And I was like, what the fuck? Dude, my... My my dad's my whole life has and still like is a big eBay reseller because he yeah. he works at estate sales a lot so he'll in auctions so he'll find a lot of stuff and I used to hate it as a kid because like it would clutter up our house and I always thought it was like unnecessary and now I totally get it yeah and it's like in finding like if you know where to look like you can find yeah. some really cool shit and worth well, yeah a and lot that's how money. I, like. And a lot of times I just come across other cool stuff while I'm looking for stuff yeah. for myself where I know like, you know, like that lamp, like yeah. I got that at a yeah. state sale for like 30 bucks. It's yeah. Like some weird, crazy, like Danish or Dutch lamp. It's gotta be like a hundred something bucks. Oh, it's, 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 they're insane. It's insanely expensive yeah. to where I probably should have sold it. It was so yeah. expensive, but then I go, that's <laughs> one of the ones cool. where I'm like. It's so cool, and I'm never going to be able to buy one of these. Like, yeah. I would never just go spend 600 bucks on that. Like, dude, nothing in here that you see have I paid. Like, that's the most expensive thing in here. <laughs> the owl? No, no, no. The, oh, the painting? The Death Dealer painting. Yeah. And right. I bought, like, these three paintings for 100 bucks off of... Uh, marketplace uh, only the marketplace of, is the way to only go, because man. of that one there's like another one's over there against the wall yep. but it was because of that death dealer one yeah 
And now people are like, uh, somebody hit me up. They're like, if you get any for Zeta stuff, black velvet, because I have all these black velvet paintings. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I have one. So like, I'll buy it. I'm like, it's not for sale. That's no. literally the one that I wanted. Yeah. Know? But now I have, I have a bunch of black velvets upstairs, but I want to start. I sold, I had this Hank Williams Jr. one and I got it and then I sold it. Uh recently and then i'm going to because somebody really wanted it they they were like they're like a huge fan i was like mm-hmm. all right i'll sell it to you because i'm trying to stack some money up yeah man but i'm gonna sell the rest of them because i have like tubes and tubes and tubes of like original prints and art from and people in the sitting, other room yeah. that are just sitting in tubes that would uh, that are much more enjoyable to look at than these old ass yeah. paintings which i love black velvet paintings but i gotta gotta let go yeah, I gotta let go. I like I like to I like to mix it up, you know. Yeah, man. I actually want to do that down here. I kind of want to redesign everything and make it a little cooler. But need- I'm not like an interior decorator, so I gotta I'll have help you somebody. Out. Yeah, I need some people that are like know what's up to help me design the set. I mean, I like better. the I like the vibe so far. I got tons of medieval weapons at my house. Yeah, I tried to buy a sword recently to put on there. I did get this bootleg Frank Frazetta knife. This this was in the package deal for the um uh Oh yeah. The with the GG Allen DVDs. Which <laughs> Hopefully those are this like doesn't get hedge. you unmonetized. Yeah, unmonetized. We saw the blade. Oh shit, I can't close it. It's uh that's like one of those old like nineties bootleg knives. No, that's not how you hand a knife. Can you, you close gotta, it? <laughs> that's not it either. How do you hand a knife? You gotta hold the blade like that. Nope. Put the blade in your hand like this. Yep. And then thank you. Wow. That's you boys, learn something new that's old every boy day. Scout stuff. <laughs> I wasn't a Boy Scout. Sorry, I wasn't either. I was like a Cub Scout. I just I was a Cub Scout. I knew I most things I've done in life. I learned enough to be dangerous. Martial arts. I learned enough to like defend myself and whack people. Yeah, I just carry. I'm just gonna hand you the knife like that. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I also learned how to use a knife, so I didn't have to use the martial arts later on. (laughs) That's Uh, awesome. Yeah, how big of a VHS collection do you have, though? Um, pretty pretty big. Uh, it's getting kind of out of control. I collect DVDs, 4Ks, Criterion's, um, yeah. and VHSs. Um, so I'm, it's I got a couple shelves full. Yeah. Um, but I also make them. As yeah, well. you were telling me about that. Uh, so we um, or at least in my spare time, like for like newer movies and stuff, if there's like 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 a movie like long legs or something is like the first one to come to mind i've always like because i used to do graphic designing as well and so i'll like design like something on photoshop with right. a template and then i'll go get it printed off printed out at office depot and i'll just like cut it out by hand and then glue make it make a and, box and then just record the movie on a blank vhs or erase an old one and tape over it Sick. That's pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah, there's like a big underground thing for that, I think, because people have been seeing those pop up online where people are doing that. Dude, the other day I met someone on Facebook Marketplace who has a huge following on Instagram. And I won't like air out who he personally is or anything, but his name's Death by VHS. Um, and he does that, but like on a like professional level. Like I kind of just do it Mm -hmm. as a hobby. I Mm -hmm. don't sell Mm -hmm. them or anything. Mm -hmm. They're just for me. Um, but he does, he sells them on Instagram. He does drops and everything and his like quality and craftsmanship on it is so cool. And he makes like all the artwork on it and stuff. And the fact that I had been following him for like ever at this point, and he's from Kansas City. And I was like, you no, found him. yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I don't want to air him out here, but yeah, it was it was pretty. I'm yeah, not gonna say like where specifically. Like very, like, he's he's anonymous online. Yeah. So, uh, but super cool guy, and I got to like see like everything, and I guess I was the first person to like to to be like, are you this guy? And he's yeah. Like, yeah. And I was like, dude, you're my idol. That's it. <laughs> that's real cool. Um, what? What do you think got you back? Is like, cause are you like a vinyl guy? Are you a record guy? Um, are you a- I would say I collect more CDs than I do vinyls. Right. I do have a couple of vinyls, like some Ramones ones, and like Never Mind the Bullocks and stuff, yeah. and some like horror, yeah, ones as well, like soundtracks and everything. Um, but and I collect CDs more. I guess that was kind of more popular whenever I was growing up. Yeah. Versus vinyls, but I do like vinyls. I just don't have a vinyl player, so it's been hard for me to like make that jump into starting like collecting a bunch of vinyl. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I like my buddy Eric has this like crazy like Morant stereo now. Dude, like, this I want to get balls stereo, deep in that. Like so crazy, and uh, I I was I I kind of like pieced together like the ghetto version of stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I've got like a Sansui from the seventies. <laughs> yeah, and, like, man. No, I've been cool. piecing together an old school rig, but. I dig it. It's something about it. It, it kind of makes you appreciate it. It's art. Well, not just that, but like I'll fucking hit the skip button in a heartbeat you on know Spotify what I mean? or something on yeah. anything. I agree. So with a vinyl, you're kind of like have to uh, you like end up listening to the whole side of a record and then you flip it and then it's like very it's much it's it's like very. Uh, it's like very zen like for yeah. me to like I it's very easy for me to listen to like a whole record and like understand it better if I have it yeah on a vinyl. Yeah, it's and that's the thing, it's like you're you're listening to it like from the perspective of like the the musician, like how they want it to be listened. Right. And that's what makes it good. And like that's that's the problem. Like I I love Spotify and everything and it's nice to have all my music in one place, but like when I just shuffle my music, I'm skipping so many songs and yeah. I'm not like listening to them fully or I'll listen to like a quarter and then I'll skip to the next one or whatever. Yeah. And I've been trying to get back into like, okay, if I'm going to drive, like, or um, if I'm going to be doing things today, I'm going to be listening to music. Like I'm going to listen to just an artist or like just an album in its entirety. Um, that way I can like appreciate like the art side of it more right. than just like listen to the singles and that's it. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I, I, when I, when I, when we get the print shop set up, um, cause we're taking over this whole space, we're getting ready to build it all out. Sweet. One of the things I'm going to do is make it a, like, I'm going to make sure we get a record player in there very soon. And like, I can take records up there because it's, it's not always the easiest to listen at the house. Like, cause if I turn it on, I want to jam it, but I also have a kid. So I'm yeah. not trying to make her listen to whatever we, I'm into some, Frank gets me into some weird shit. dude. <laughs> I'll just be going in there. Frank be like, look at this. And there's like, man, like this dude, William on your boards. It's like this weird African dude. That's like I maybe mean, these weird. I don't even know. It's just weird shit. Like I like Tim Maya a lot. There's like this psychedelic Brazilian dude. So it's all in Portuguese. Yeah. And then like, it's just weird shit. I'll get some weird, like I have regular stuff that's, that I listen to that's sick, but a lot of, I get all, I mean, I, I'll, sh you can see my collection yeah. when we're done, but there's, it has a little bit of everything. I'm like, of course I have like every, I've, I've like gone out of my way to get like, I've like, I'm huge Bob Seger guy. So I have like <laughs> every, Sweet. like all these rare Seger records. Yeah. And I've been like getting every van. I really like Van Morrison a lot. So I have like all the Van Morrison shit. Um, Oh, my bad. I'm the one with my my phones on in the other <gasps> room. I put oh, mine shit. on silent, man. Yeah, it's all right. It <laughs> yeah, can, I'm just kidding. I, I should have. I didn't even think about it. I had to plug it in. But uh, yeah, so I, I have like a very like weird. Yeah. You know, I've been trying to get my kid into it. So I get her. She's way into like Suicide Boys. Fuck yeah. I love and Suicide so Boys. We actually just went and saw them. <sighs> um, a buddy of ours is friends with their sound guy and he got us on the guest list with them and she got to stand in like the sound area to see the show. So, which is great for me. Cause yeah. the, uh, the last thing I wanted to do was like have to be in close last year. I had to sit in the chairs and I oh, was in very fun. close quarters combat with <laughs> 25 year old, Dude. like weed head, suicide boys fans and i was just like oh man i don't i don't know if i can't do this again so when my buddy hit us up my buddy dalton was like yo we're going to go stand down the ga i was like sick yeah i want to sit too do. yeah i uh i went and saw pain of truth with dying wish and out of pocket up at uh in lawrence i can't remember it's called like liberty mm -hmm. hall or something maybe? yeah liberty hall yeah yeah went there um and I, they had like a top row where you could sit 
yeah. and no one was up there and i was balcony. like we should sneak up there and sit because i'm way too like my back's hurting just from standing yeah <laughs> like i don't want to do this yeah i i i was the opposite at that specific show i didn't want to sit because last year everyone was just like hitting weed pins dude, in the so audience especially and, the suicide boys yeah concert, so dude. it was like crazy this time we had like no one around us because the floor Perfect. wasn't all the way full it was nice uh i saw sleep at liberty hall i've seen a bunch of bands Sweet. there yeah. like back in the day dude lawrence has got a good hardcore scene i haven't been to shows in a while but i like earlier that month i went and saw a hardcore band called tsunami oh yeah and ingrown my uh sister and her old man went to that day i i, I thought about i almost went but i did it was sick it was tsunami ingrown a band i really fuck with called terrena um Apex Predator and Spine opened. Yeah. Kansas City guys. Yeah. Spine's the, uh, Dilly's my dog, the drummer. Yeah, dude. No, they were awesome. They were so tight. And, um, I was not like in the pit, but I was pretty close, like up front by the stage. Pit and adjacent. Pit adjacent. Yeah. yeah. And I was just catching bodies the whole time. Yeah. And it was like, it like wore me down. I yeah. was like, dude, how the fuck did I used to like stage dive and go fucking hardcore dance and shit and then like just be fine afterwards like i was i wasn't even doing anything i was just bobbing my head and then yeah. occasionally someone would come fly in my direction and i would help like catch them and push them aside dude I, and i was so sore afterwards i uh I didn't even do anything <laughs> yeah i'll be on my feet all day at work and then i'll come home never sit down eat something take a shower then go to go to a show and you know then you're standing there yeah because then i get to a show half the time and i'm like if i sit down i'm going to leave because i'm going to be yeah. so tired yep. that i'm going to end up falling asleep at this concert yeah yeah the older you get the more fucked up it is i haven't i well i told you i've fucked up and missed that show that was Who last was it? night uh it's this band called uncle lucius they're kind of like a, they're like a americana roots rock band uh they were together then they broke up then they got back together and it's really good it's just some shit i found on spotify honestly i, I wouldn't have known about them otherwise and you're like, oh, they're in the area yeah well i i i missed them they were here like six months ago i think they're like because they're from texas so i think they're like a six month band where they're yeah. probably like it's one of those you know but they uh i just missed them and then i messed around last night try to rescue a damn stray dog and i saw that again. man hey but you got him home quick yeah i got i got him a place to so go what happened were you just out walking your dog i was walking the dog you? the dog followed us home i knew where the dog came from so i put him on a leash and started taking him back got it like a block away realized the, the dog started fighting me oh yeah. trying to go back like, i walked up my close friend's some friends, some some close people live across the street, and I saw one of them outside, and they informed me about how jacked up that house is, which I used to live across the street from them as well, so I knew prior how that house has always been jacked up, and we've seen the dog when we walk, because he's tied to a fence with a four-foot <sighs> leash around his neck inside of, he's inside of a fenced-in yard with a leash on and like some shitty piece of wood made to be a lean-to in the corner and uh i you know the homie was like yo just let him go because he, he's always ends up getting free and then like just see what happens but don't bring him back again if he ends up over by your house i'm like cool so i walked back you saved him man and he showed back up so i was like well i'm not i'm not taking this dog back down there again they had those same people had another dog such a sweet looking dog too. and a couple months ago that dog got free and then my friends saw it on pet finder but never went they didn't not like they're gonna go tell the people like the dog got adopted Fucking you know so now the shit. dog got picked up today by a lady who works for the rescue and she's got him she lives down the street she's got him they got him uh neutered and vaccinated and uh probably gave him the covid shot yep but he uh so he'll be getting a new home soon he's a great dog i just our house is not big enough to have a dog yeah. that size yeah depending on how this music thing goes my wife and i have always talked about like once our dog unfortunately passes away yeah i don't think we could ever like he's such a good dog he is yeah. the best dog and there's not i've never met a single dog in my life that is like him yeah um 
And so it would feel really weird to get another dog or yeah. replace him in a way. Um, so we're, we've always said that we're, we'll try to like do some type of fostering system where right. we just take in dogs and try to take care of them until they can find a new home and right. stuff. Cause yeah, it's yeah, sad, yeah. man. Yeah. This lady, she had like three or four dogs at a time. I yeah. think she was cool. She was a really rad lady. Uh, but she came and got him. She's got like a pin in the back of her car, all rigged up, ready to like Dude, yeah. take a dog to the vet and shit. And, but he's a good dog. Like he, he was playing with my dog and they just, he non-aggressive, just a puppy. He was only like a year old. So yep. he's a, he's in a good place and, but fucker, I didn't get to see uncle Lucius, but that's all right. They'll be back. <laughs> Damn dog. <laughs> I missed a few bands here recently. I, I really like this band, American Aquarium. I missed them because I was taking her to, I, we ended up getting the Suicide Boys tickets. But then I found out that there was like a giant brawl that night at that show, which is also weird because that's yeah. like the dude's like Mr. Sobriety. So he's like big in the sober community because yeah. he's like been sober for a long time. And like, it's just a weird show for there to be like a drunk massive brawl at it, Knuckleheads. I'm pretty sure we talked about it last time, but I there was this band that was playing in St. Louis called Fleshwater that I really like. Mm -hmm. They use, they're kind of like actually majority of the band, um, use, I don't know if they, they still are a band or not, but they're, they have another project called vein FM. That's like a hardcore band. Okay. And they played at, uh, like a really small venue in St. Louis. And I still to this day regret that I didn't buy my tickets on the spot because it sold out like that. Yeah. And, like now they're going on tour with like the Deftones and shit, oh, like shit. nowhere near our area. And I'm like, yeah, fuck. like I missed like such a good opportunity because that band, like they're just going to keep going up. Right. And like to see them in like a super small intimate venue would have been so cool. Yeah. We went and saw Animal and the Sniffers at <laughs> the Granada. Yeah. And then now they're playing at the Uptown when they come back again. But I don't know if I'm going to go because like the band's great. I love them. But like, Dude, last time is like I can only deal with so many femme Nazis in one place at a time. <laughs> and like there was people like people kept touching me and like this lady was oh, trying no. like there was not enough room to walk anymore. We were like all the way down on the floor. There wasn't no room to walk any farther in. You couldn't go in you couldn't get anywhere else. We were all <laughs> like you were stuck. Yeah. And this lady was like jerking on my shirt and I like fucking <laughs> threw my arms back like get off of me she's like you just elbowed me i'm like Qu quit touching me man like the lady just gave a speech and said don't touch nobody that don't want to be touched i'm that person i don't want to be touched she was like, like tugging on your shirt oh she's like, like trying to move you on, out of the way on the back of my shirt like pulling like this trying to pull herself past me i'm like there's nowhere to go man and you're not i'm not moving like i was here sorry yeah you should have got, but there was this band that opened up. Oh my God, dude, there was the worst. They were called the, the Limbretti girls or something. I swear to God, Nate, this had to Never be like, uh, something like that. Somebody's going to be like, that's not the band. I don't give a shit. They sucked. Number one, they sucked. They sounded like, it was like a two piece band and it was like, Dude, they have to be like industry plants or something. Oh, yeah. Because like TikTok band? Maybe? No, dude, like record industry plants cuz oh. they all their music kind of sounded I I guess it was a three piece. They it sounded like the Idols but shittier. You oh, know what I no. mean? Like that cadence. Yeah. And then it's this English band every fucking song, dude. This lady had a goddamn symposium about whatever like every social justice thing that triggers people in america they had a song about it and they're not even from here right and it's like it's like if you want to have your stance on certain things whether it's political or not in your music that's totally fine that's cool but like people are just there to i don't need a speech about music. it at they're one just point there to dude, listen to music she started uh uh i can't remember what they were singing fuck America or fuck the constitution okay. or both. And I was looking around and I tell, uh, I kept notes. I saw who was chanting that shit. Like you got me <laughs> fucked up dog. Like it was weird. They were like, D they sucked. Like I, I don't say that a lot about bands, but they really, it was, it just sucked. It was not 
good at all. And a friend yeah. of mine, she was with us, and I, her and I looked at each other at one point. And we're like, "What the fuck is going <laughs> on?" Like, it made no sense, dude. Like, it was weird. And my, I had like my buddy Eric, who's like kind of conservative. He's like in his fifties, a hot rod guy. So even he's like, "Dude, what the?" Like, he can handle a lot. And yeah. he's like, "Dude, that sucked, man." <laughs> like, yeah, dude. I don't know who the hell this band is. They were not great, man. Clearly, yeah, not good enough. If you can't even remember. So them. I don't know who they're touring with this time, but I'm gonna check before. I spend my 40 bucks True. to go to a concert again. I don't know. Who else have I but seen? But not for the mirror cell shows coming up. With that mirror cell, yeah. And Lawrence, I'll come out to 15 that. 15 bucks. Yeah. I think, uh, well, the Lawrence one is like $23, but I got you. Yeah, I'll, I'll I got, If you're coming out, out, I got you. I'll still show up. I'll, I'll tell my niece she'll go. She's into that kind of shit. Yeah. Get Nico, too. Yeah, I'll tell Nico. I'll make. I'll kidnap Nico and make kidnap him go. Nico. Nico is into that shit though. That dude's he at is. like a heavy fucking metal concert every night of the week, dude. I'm like, how can you? How can you guys emo this much, dude? <laughs> like, <laughs> what are you doing tonight? All that remains. Oh my Fuck god, yeah, dude. Throw, throw down, like. Oh Jesus. yeah, man. Christ, get um, little Jesus in with your hardcore. When I met him at FedEx. Which is really funny how things work. Like, I met Nico at a FedEx, and now I'm sitting here talking to you. Yeah. Because he knows you, and I saw him talking to you. I was yeah. like, this guy looks cool. Uh, it's just weird to think about that. Yeah. But when I met him at FedEx, we were talking about, like, old metalcore bands and shit for, like, hours while yeah. we were sitting in there waiting for our prints to be done. Yeah. And it was it was really cool. Yeah, he's about it. He's in the scene. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He loves it. Him and his wife. Yeah. They're all about it. I'm more of a, you know... I'm I'm more of a rock and roll guy, but I just love it all. Yeah, I I listen to all kinds of music, but I don't really dive into like, you know. I left the scene, uh, like my scene. I still know everybody, but it's not like I don't like engage in that shit anymore. Yeah. Too. I've realized I've gotten too old for their the scene drama that comes with like rock and punk rock people. It's always some true shit. But that's probably just because I don't drink. If I drank, I'd probably be fucking balls deep in it just like causing chaos still but yeah man i uh, yeah i really like i love like i love east coast hardcore like new york hardcore like mad balls mm -hmm. one of my favorite bands um I like a lot of shit out of boston um you know blood him uh blood for blood i was big blood for blood guy then that dude like raped a chick or whatever oh, wow so that that there's that, but then like the guy from uh, Blood for Blood has another band called Ramallah, and they put out a couple of records that are really I think I've good. I've heard of them. Uh, we need to get you on some Japanese punk, my guy. Uh, yeah, Frank's always trying to get me to listen That's to where the these real Japanese shit is. punk bands. I wore I, uh, my I wore my Stalin shirt today. Yeah. Well, I don't listen to Kami Rock. So. It's not Kami Rock. <laughs> it's not their band. It's a weird band name. It's The Stalin. Okay. Um, but they're sick as fuck. They're dope. Yeah. I, uh, from like yeah, 80s, I think. Like yeah, I haven't got into the Japanese shit. There was I do, uh, you know, I'm big garage rock guy, yeah. like or like 60s garage punk shit, but I'm, I'm always open to like hearing new shit. We've been big in Australia bands here lately, dude. There's I like, think, I think you would like the Stalin. They're yeah. sick. They're from like, I mean, I wasn't even fucking born at like the height of their career. Right. I just found them whenever I started getting into like punk music and cross punk and shit. And no, they're dope. They, uh, I don't know if they're even active anymore. They were like big in like 84 and 85 and oh, shit. Yeah, probably not. Uh, but yeah, all their song titles are in Japanese. So I have no idea what any of the songs or album names are. Right. Except for Stop Jap. That's the only one that's like in English, I think. Yeah. Um, but they're they're really cool. They're they're kind of more on like the punk side. Um, but I still think they're like hardcore esque. Like they're yeah. pretty aggressive. Yeah, I you know, it's hard to deviate the difference. Like at a certain point you gotta just like include shit in like one base genre, I yeah. think. Like you know, there's punk and that includes a lot of different things. But I just I Back to the hardcore thing, like the East Coast hardcore. I love tough guy hardcore, and like yeah. I'm always like people are always turning me on to bands. But then it's like every time, like I went to see Madball, and then you go there, and it's like all these dudes are like, and it's like okay, dude, like I get it, like cool, yeah. Like, everybody's tough here. I you don't have to like You'll spin kick my head. Like, off. There's always dudes just like staring at you, and I'm just like, God, leave me alone, man. I just came here to listen to like 
these dudes play music. I'm not here to like fucking beat people up or any of whatever whatever bullshit you guys are on still. <laughs> you guys are all like 40 and 50 years old. Like cut it out, man. <laughs> like we're too old for this shit. Like, yeah. Nobody's uh, smiling at those shows. <laughs> having a good time yeah yeah they, they tell you they're having fun but it's like if your face doesn't look like you're having fun <laughs> but then there's always that dumb shit that i never got where like like going out of your way to like purposely punch people that are just standing there True. that's that like boston shit i never got that that shit's yeah. retarded it's dumb as hell yeah like that's just stupid that's just and I got in somebody's ass about it. I was like, doing shit like that is just like, that's what pussies do because they, they want to fight, but they're too afraid to actually go fist fight anybody. So they do dumb stuff like that. Like, they'll like run up and punch somebody that's not even in the pit. And then go like... And then run the other way. Away, yeah. yeah. And it's like, dude, just add, just go fist fight out front or something. Dude, yeah. Get out your aggression elsewhere. Like, yeah. There, or you can do it without having to like just randomly hit some dude in the face. Like it's just, it's ridiculous. It's absurd. Yeah. Like, like you're at that point, like I told this kid at easy in at this punk show, I was like, dude, you're aggressive. Like you just kicked me in the knee. You're mule kicking into a crowd of people like at a tiny venue. Yeah. Like you're doing this, trying to hurt someone. Yeah. And like, if you want to hurt people, cool. But like, I'll just go outside and fist fight you. If that's like, if that's your intention and yeah. well, we can settle it that way, but you're going to fucking, you're going to hit someone in here. Like you're going to break somebody's no, like you're just going to do something stupid. And so it's like, I never understood that part about it. like there's letting out aggression in a mosh pit. And then there's just like violence. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like trying to hurt people, like hurting innocent people that are just there just to watch. Like, right. Just a bystander. Dude. Like, like, like if you're in the pit and you see someone else that's like moshing, free game like you guys can push each other right if you're right if you're if this is the mosh pit and you're the last person if you're in the mosh pit and you get an accidental like arm or something understandable but if some guy runs right up to you and just punches you right in the face because you're standing on the edge of the mosh pit that's like that's no different than when they used to run up behind people and like punch them from behind yeah and that was a trend it's the same thing it is it's just at a concert yeah yeah man it's it's scary Like I, but you know, it's, I wonder if maybe that's just like an East coast hardcore thing. Maybe they do that shit here. here. All the younger kids are like way into the ultra violence. And I'm like crazy. I mean, when I went and saw tsunami and ingrown and pain of truth, um, the night prior, um, it was pretty chill. Sick. I <laughs> like, wish I would have like, like, it was just like a lot of kids, like just hardcore dancing, crowd surfing. Yeah. Like they'll kind of like push each other around, but like no one was like going out of their way to like. And I think that's because, at least at those shows, they know that the band will see that and they will call them out and they'll yeah. get their fucking ass beat. Right. And there's some bands that are like all about that. You know what yeah. I mean? But I'm not about that shit. Yeah. I it's agree. Hardcore. Hardcore fuckers. What? I don't even know what time it is. We're good. We're good. On, oh, I guess it tells me up top. I don't know. It doesn't really say how long it's been recording, does it? We're going till we. Hit oh no, it morning. does. I see it now. We're good. We're still good. We're going. I've been trying to teach myself like with like an internal clock of like an hour. Yeah. So I, I've been getting pretty good at it. We're close. Right on, man. We're like forty-eight minutes. <laughs> uh, wait, do you is the physical copy of your e? Do you have a physical copy of that EP you guys put out? What's the EP called? Uh, so it's called Reflecting the Inner Self. Right, and that's all kind of tongue and cheeky for the band name. Uh, Spotify. Yep. Everywhere. Where else? Everywhere. Everywhere. SoundCloud, Bandcamp. You know, I never check SoundCloud. I'm pretty sure, though. Um, right. I've always, like, up, like when, back when I used to use SoundCloud, I would upload music personally through right. there. I don't know if the distributor automatically. Yeah, because you're on, like, a, you have, like, a distribution deal or something? So we're, uh, yeah, we're on, we actually, I was going to say, a lot has happened since we right. talked Right, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, so shortly after we had our podcast i think that was like right before we dropped dissolve maybe right it was one song that came out and i think another one was coming out soon yeah so that's where things kind of got wonky was we were planning a release for our music video tongues that's out now right um but we got we started shopping around a little bit 
Um, we're now on in Vogue records. Um, cool. so we're, we're officially signed. Um, and yeah, so that, that was, it was perfect. Like the timing of it, because we just did a collab song with another band from the UK called mm-hmm. Darknet. Um, and so that was like great timing. Cause like that single, like saved us a lot of time to like not have anything out and to gear up for the EP release. But yeah, that, um, that kind of stopped things for a little bit. And then that's why we didn't release the song and EP until October 25th. Cool. So it was, uh, it was for the best, but it was very painful to like wait. It was, but yeah, that's how it goes, man. With, with but no, but it's a, you know, you're getting a better opportunity now, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, and that kind of segues perfectly into, um, us recording our first full length coming up. So yeah, we got, we got some songs done, um, yeah. some ideas that need to be touched on a little bit more, but, um, I'm going, going in with my boys uh caleb and ben in st louis here soon and we're just gonna we're gonna get cooking yeah and i feel like that there's like it's one of those genres of music where the people that are into that specific thing it's like their shit it's their life right but then it's also a kind of music that it sort of bleeds into every sort of area of like hard rock and heavy metal to where it's not just for that that specific group of people like i think other people also enjoy that that just enjoy heavy shit but there, there's people like man there's so many like weird influences that i hear in it like uh power man 5000 oh for sure yeah you know what i mean a lot and of the like, new metal stuff like yeah first and third generation like first right. or third generation of new metal and just like hints of it you know what yeah. i mean but it's it's definitely its own thing like i don't think it Thanks. can be defined as something that already existed you know dude that's what I've been preaching like on so many of these other podcast interviews and stuff that I've done. It's like, just take the fucking risk. Like yeah. I'm so sick at, at least, you know, being in the metal core scene, at least, um, I'm so fucking sick of these same bands. Yeah. Like, please, if, if anyone out there is going to be making a record or thinking of starting a band or is in a band and you're making choruses that sound like everything else, just stop. <laughs> I'm yeah. going to unalive myself. Um, I just, um, I just really think that like, there's a lot of oversaturation, right? at least in my world of music. And there's very few bands that are like, taking weird approaches when it comes to like what their chorus could sound like or what other influence of music they could incorporate into their songs. And I think that's why there's bands like, um, uh, fuck. What's that hardcore band? The turnstile. I love like, you know what I mean? I think that's why bands like that hit same thing with idols, right? Like Mm -hmm. it took this like sort of English punk pub rock thing and then they totally like flipped it on its head and, and did weird stuff do you like code orange have you ever listened to them mm, i don't think so i think you would you would like them they're they're definitely a big influence for me with okay. mirror cell and that's mainly because they blend a lot of like at least with their newer material they they still got like hardcore roots but they also got some like nine inch nails and like portis head like influences and shit right. and it's like that makes me like that band even more because it's right. not just the same hardcore record, the same metalcore record, or the same chorus. Like, if if I listen to something and I'm like, oh whoa, what the hell? Then like, at, even if at first I'm like, this is weird, right? Eventually I'll come around to it. And yeah, I'll be yeah, like, yeah. I prefer this over the same cookie cutter like chorus or setup with a song. Like, right. And I think same thing about Ammo and the Sniffers. I think that's why they hit so big was that they you know here's this punk record that they put out then it kind of like changed a little bit in the second one and then the new one's like kind of all over the place you know what i mean but then sometimes record labels get involved and the people are like this one was a hit we're gonna make more of this song and it's like oh fuck luckily uh before we signed we already had some songs done and uh it's really taken the like direction that i want it to with this project where like we're kind of more experimental with what we're doing um and it's all it also feels really fresh compared to a lot of stuff that's out there like i don't think there's a lot of bands out there that could i'm not trying to like suck my own dick but right i don't think there's a lot of bands out there that could be writing the type of music that we're 
currently writing and also planning on writing. Like there's, right. there's a lot of diversity, um, with the stuff that we have planned, um, and recorded already. But, uh, what I was trying to say is the label already got to hear those demos right. and they're like totally on board with it. Yeah. Which so is it, great. It, it there's no there's interference. No, like, interference. Right, right. Yeah. Right. They, they're, I think they understand like that we're pretty strong in our vision aesthetically and sonically. Yeah. And they're like this, like keep doing this. <laughs> yeah, you, you don't need any guidance. You yeah. got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, they can help you with the business part. Exactly. Of, of the business. That's right. it. Yep. Yeah. No, it's that's beautiful. cool. And that's like doing this. Like, you know, I've, uh, you know, I've yet to make a dollar off of doing any of this. I do it because it's fucking fun Same. and I like talking to people. But also, it's nice that like with this, I get to do whatever I want. And then there's always people that are like well you, sh- you could do this or like this is how you do this thing to make it more pop and i'm like hey man i just do what i do you know what yeah. i mean and that's all i'm gonna ever do same thing with our print shop there's a million ways to skin the cat but nico and i have our own vision and goal and like we know how we want to do business and the kind of thing like what our goals are and it's fucking working you know what yeah. i mean we're more often than not we're doing designs for people now and then printing those same designs for them and like perfect yeah so it's been good. But yeah, if you stay true to yourself, you'll never go wrong. It pays off. It pays off. And and, and yeah, and like and take the risk. Yeah. Like there's a song that we already have recorded, uh, that's still a demo, but the original chorus I re recorded for it was like at first, at first I didn't I didn't like it and it was super weird. I was like, I don't know how I feel about this. Is it was it's really like it takes a turn in the song. Um, and I, we had an alternative version of that, that we had written and I, I couldn't sleep at night thinking about it. I was like, I gotta go record this other version. I gotta know what it sounds like. So I did. And we listened back to it. The other version that we recorded of it was like very, like I said, like basic kind of rock chorus. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of other bands probably would have a chorus like this or something akin to it. Right. And after I listened to it, I was like, cool, let's do the original one. The original one's weirder. I want to do that one. I don't want to do something that someone's going to expect. Right. Or someone's going to be like, oh, yeah, those are cool. Like, no, I want someone to be like, what the fuck am I listening to? Right. And so, yeah, that was a long winded way of saying just take a f- take the risk do on weird, doing yeah things. do whatever you think is like just take it like Please. We, and we're doing that makes like, it more authentic we had like this you know we're like trying to name our business nico and i and then it's like well then you hear people and they're like for a successful business you, it's like i don't know so we just called it zoink and then people are like what the fuck is that that's so like, sick you know, I, don't, I don't know dude like and then now it's been like a thing where like and that's changed you know we went from last time you were here nico and i had, we're getting ready to throw a car show in May, and then that turned into, a, a, you know, a couple weeks after that, we bought an entire screen printing shop out and start. It was out there in my garage, and now we've got a spot down the street. And Dude, we crazy. keep going, like doing jobs. We're doing some logos for some bands right now, and doing some designs for some parts people and all kinds of shit. So, rock oh, on, man. Yeah, yeah. that's it's, awesome. Uh, yeah, it's it crazy. What it is how much shit happens you know even like in a short amount of time because when did we talk last was that it was like winter last year maybe yeah it had to be it was after the first of the year but it had to be like january or no it was cold that's all i remember it probably would have been i don't know how to look it might have been before it might have been like almost a year ago yeah it might have been in november or december yeah it doesn't seem like it was that long it ago. doesn't but at the same time like so much has happened that yeah it makes you feel like it is yeah because the owl wasn't here the owl is not here so that means that got here in like february i think yeah, yeah dude, and like, these I chairs got, like, weren't here oh yeah the, okay so yeah so that was it was definitely yeah we had the other two chairs yeah i even got fancy my buddy luke and tiff they I know I got the uh, oh yeah I got the dimmer so the light isn't like the yep. neon isn't blowing you out so that was cool. <laughs> I got these tables. These weren't here because the, the mics were no. in the middle I think last this time. One was, but yeah, these are cool. I like these. Uh, but yeah, we need to get you uh like a medieval armor set. I've been right there I in have the corner. got the crown. I got the crown. 
I got the helmet. I try to wear it sometimes, but it's like my head's too big for it. It should be mandatory where you, if it's your guest's first time, they have to wear it. Yeah, that should do something weird like that. Yeah. Yeah, I, was, I have so much weird small shit that that's what I'm saying. I need to, I need to like shelf it up and make it look cool. This reminds me of my man cave. I just I got tons of stuff like this and tons of taxidermy and everything yeah. like that too. Yeah, and even the computer room's all different now. It's It's been getting crazy. All right, well, we've successfully reached our hour point. Um, guys, you can go find Nate Mirror Cell everywhere, right? Yep, everywhere. And check his music out. Uh, if you get a chance to see him live, go do that. Support the cause. You know how to find me already because you're here, Black Magic <laughs> TV. And Nate, thanks for coming back Dude, on. Thank you so much. I and don't think it'll be the last. No, I don't think so <laughs> at all. And I, I'm excited to see you here uh, next month. Yes, sir. All right, we'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.